I'm Dan Fitzpatrick at Stock and Option Market Mentor.com on Thursday, January 24th. And in this video, I want to look at, uh, at, at Apple. Um, look, here's the deal. Um, I saw somebody on Fast Money last week. I, I don't know who it was. Um, I forget. And that's probably a good thing. Um, who was saying definitively that the bottom is in. Uh, definitive, like the bottom is in. The bottom is in. In Apple. And this is, look, if you're listening to people make calls on CNBC, and I'm not singling out this guy, whoever he is. Um, if you're listening to people make calls like this, ask yourself, can he really do that? Like, does he, does, does he or she, you know, whoever it is, do they really have that kind of prescience? Do they really have that kind of edge that they can pound the table and say definitively, the bottom is in, or this is the top, or whatever the reason, you know, what, whatever the call is, something like that. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because I'm trying to, you know, through these videos, as well as stock and optionmarketmentor.com, by the way, guys in the OMM forum, awesome job today. I understand that was rocking in there. Uh, with a lot of great analysis and some great trades and um, all the children playing together really well in the sandbox. So I love that. Thank you. Um, but anyway, what I'm trying to do here and the rest of the people on my team is empower you. And you know what empowerment, you know where that starts from? It starts from disempowering other people. In other words, Take everything you hear with about two grains of salt, um, preferably Himalayan sea salt, which is really, really good, um, especially when mixed with almond um, uh, butter. But anyway, um, take, take things that people say with a grain of salt and ask yourself, can, where the heck is that coming from? Again, whether it's a fundamental call or a technical call, just because somebody's on Bloomberg or CNBC or you hear them on the radio or see an internet video. By the way, I'm putting myself at the top of, the li of this list of people that you should be skeptical about. Um, just because somebody's got a microphone or a camera, um, does, maybe that means they're you know, good enough to have a microphone and a camera and, and actually have an audience that will listen to them. But they're not so good that they know stuff that you don't know. And I'll say it again. They're not so good that they know stuff that you don't know or that you can't know with just a little bit of thinking. And so I'm challenging you to start thinking for yourself. Listen to what people are saying. Read what people are writing. But then put it in your own mill. Put it in your own grinder. Put it in your own bag and shake it up because you are the one that knows more than anybody else about your finances. Because if you start making trades based solely on what Dan Fitzpatrick says or what anybody else says, then let's face it, it's really not your trade anyway. It's just mine. And unless you have my cell number and are inclined to call me up, and of course I'm inclined to answer and tell you exactly when to get out of that trade, um, then, then you're not a trader. Um, you, you're just somebody who's working on a tip. So don't do that. Take advantage of all the resources that you have and then ultimately make your own decision. Now, with that said, um, take what I have to say with a grain of salt. Make your own decisions. But I don't think Apple's done going down. Um, I didn't think it was done going down before earnings. I just didn't know because it could have screamed up to 600 or higher on a great number, or it could have been pounded to, oh, 450.50 um, on bad numbers. But the path of least resistance is down. I, I don't have to, especially if you remember, you've been hearing me talk about this forever. I don't have to point out this head and shoulder pattern to you with the neckline. That's obvious. It's very obvious, frankly. Anybody who's a technical trader should look at a chart like this and go, oh, head and shoulders. Okay, and I'm not talking shampoo. So you take this distance here between 500 and wherever the heck this thing was, I think 710 or whatever, and then you subtract it from the neckline break, which is 500, um, and uh, 
you have what's called a measured move. Well, that right now, that measured move is right around three, I think like 310, 320, something like that. It's right back to here. And so I think, frankly, Apple could uh, fall that low. I'm certainly not predicting it. And even if it does, it ain't going to fall that way in a straight line. It's an awesome company. It's just that their growth rate is slowing. They're still growing, but not as fast as they were. So this stock has, this company has some fundamental issues that impact how much somebody would pay for the company. Um, they used to be paying a lot for growth. Now, not so much. Now, I think this dividend is actually going to become pretty important. Not 2% 2, 2 now is not that much. It doesn't get your attention when the stock's down 10. Um, but at some point, the stock's going to get down to where um, you know money managers are looking at this and saying, hey, you know, it's still Apple. It's a great tech uh, company. Absolutely. Um, I want to own it. And the little dividend, you know, that's pretty cool too. So you will see some buyers coming in here, but don't get sucked into this. Like somebody's pounding the table saying how, how Apple's really cheap right now. Fine. Before you go hit the buy button, see if anybody else is. See if the stock's actually moving higher. Because if it's not moving higher, then obviously the market does not agree with the guy who's saying that's on a fundamental basis, this is a really cheap stock. On a fundamental basis, frankly, Apple was really cheap here. And it was cheap here, and here, and here, certainly here, and here, all the way down. It's been cheap, cheap, cheap. So do you think Apple's cheap here? Heck yeah, it's really cheap. So cheap doesn't cut it. It's got to be more than cheap. And what I'm saying is it's got to have some accumulation of buyers. You, the stock has just got to be done going down. And that's going to require, in my view, more liquidation because there's a lot of folks, a lot of investors who are long Apple. You know what? I'm even long Apple in a long-term investment account that I have. Go figure. I'm pounding the table for 200 points saying how you got to get out of Apple. But I got it in one of my long-term accounts. That's where diversification works for you. you know. So the bottom line is this. Just don't be rushing out to buy Apple. It's just another stock now. Remember Dell? Remember Microsoft? Remember Cisco? Remember Hewlett Packard back in the late 90s, early 2000s? Those all had a pretty nasty fall from grace. Intel, same thing. So Apple does indeed have a way to go on the downside. So don't be catching, don't be standing in front of this falling knife trying to catch it. Just let it do what it's going to do. But with the abundance of things that are going up, do you really need to be fixated on Apple at all? Because I can tell you, unless something really weird happens, you're not going to hear me talking about it um, out in front of the curtain. Uh, meaning in these free chart videos, I may be chatting about it um, in strategy sessions and weekend updates for members. But even then, you know, memo to you members, this is not going to be a focal point of, of my analysis. It's like I really don't care about this. I was hoping that it would bounce because I could short it. And frankly, because I've been talking about, you know, to quote myself, shorting the snot out of Apple if it breaks down below 500. I think I got to go ahead and short the stock um, just to prove myself not being a liar. So that's all I got. Stay away from this thing. That's all. Um, okay, members, over to the strategy session. Sorry, we're out a little bit later than usual, but that's the weird thing about life. It happens.